for as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by emulation. I took a lot of comfort in the idea that, thanks to technology, I could play damn near any video game that struck my fancy, whether it's an old favorite, some Japanese thing that I'd never heard of, or whatever. Between this sort of convenience and the rising cost of actually buying old video games, I've found myself gravitating toward a number of different solutions for playing emulated games, each one of them slightly more convenient than the last. A friend of mine had recently informed me of the Raspberry Pi, a small Linux-based device that you essentially just build to do one thing, and, of course, people have found a way to run video game emulators on it. I took the plunge on one of these, and I've been happy enough so far. Specifically, my Raspberry is running RetroPie, a Linux software front-end designed to provide a convenient interface for running a number of different emulators. There's a ton of different options for configuring output, control types, and more, and it all seems easy enough to install, uh, even if I bought someone beer and made them install it for me. The model of Raspberry Pi I'm using is the Vilros Raspberry Pi 3, a popular option for retro Pi installations. The Vilros features four USB ports for controllers, an HDMI port for output, and it even has heat sinks that allegedly allow you to overclock your device for better performance, but I don't have the nerve to try that yet. The first thing I was impressed with about the Pi is the number of USB gamepads it would recognize and use. I was shocked to find that it recognized my DualShock 4. But for the most part, I stick with these two. The Logitech F310, thanks to its comfortable DualShock-like layout. And this Famicom-style controller made by Buffalo that I prefer for NES and Turbo Graphics games because of its button placement and better D-pad. Whatever controller you wind up using can be configured basically any way you like, but you will want to remember that you can't change layouts between different system emulators, which is why I use a few different controllers for different situations. There's a ton of configuration options aside from just the controls, and most of them you're probably never really going to need unless you have to get hardcore on output options or you're looking into overclocking your Raspberry. The RetroPie front end is polite enough to take care of most of that for you, which is great for people like me since I'm probably way too dumb to learn Linux at this point anyway. And like any good emulator, it also lets you use save states, which is frankly one of the bigger advantages the RetroPie has over flash carts. But hey, the most important part of the RetroPie is the emulators themselves, right? There's a ton of emulators on here I'm probably never going to use, but for the ones I have tried, I'm happy to say that they all work pretty damn well with a tiny handful of exceptions. The first one I tried, and probably the one I'll be using the most often, is the NES emulator. And it works well for the most part. The colors are bright, the pixel definition is crisp, and the sound is perfect. It runs all the obvious stuff, no problem. Some not-so-obvious stuff. And it handles Japanese ROMs no problem, with or without a translation patch. However, the NES emulator was actually the one I found to have the most problems. For whatever reason, there were a lot of NES ROMs that just wouldn't load no matter what. And they were all bigger ones like DuckTales or Metal Gear or Kirby's Adventure. To be honest, my modded Wii has better NES compatibility, but the RetroPie will work fine just as long as I don't want to play Rockin' Cats or something. The SNES emulation, however, works much better, at least from what I've seen. Standard games run just fine on it.
And it can even handle games that other emulators or flashcards tend to have a hard time with, like any game with the Super FX chip. I mean, sure, there's the occasional sound issue, but everything runs smoothly and with much fewer compatibility problems than the NES had. Same with the Genesis. Everything I threw at it ran fine. Even games that have tended to have compatibility problems elsewhere. And without the tinny, scratchy sound problems that a lot of other Genesis emulators tend to run into. That was probably the most impressive part of the Genesis emulation on the RetroPie. A lot of emulators tend to have a hard time with the Genesis sound chip, but it all seemed fairly authentic on my Raspberry. One of the more pleasant surprises I got with my Raspberry was with the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine emulation. Compared to how my modded Wii basically can't do Turbo Graphics at all, the Turbo Graphics emulation on the RetroPie was spot on. Like the Super Nintendo, there's the occasional sound hiccup, but the games ran smoothly and without any kind of compatibility issues, even for Japanese games that we never got over here. And this might be the best part. It runs Dracula X. That's right, the RetroPie can run Dracula X. It doesn't take a ton of work, just the right BIOS and a little tweaking of a .q file. And the Raspberry Pi runs Dracula X better than any other emulator I've seen, at least since the game came out on the Virtual Console forever ago. If nothing else, this has absolutely made my entire purchase worth it. I love this game, and I need to own as many devices that can run it as possible. Speaking of pleasant surprises, I was shocked to see how good the PlayStation emulation was. Considering how everyone on the internet warned me not to bother with N64 games on this thing, the PlayStation emulation is both easy to configure and damn near perfect. I haven't tried very many PlayStation games on it just yet, and I'm going to have to assume it still can't make Parappa the Rapper playable on an HD TV, but it is pretty awesome so far. Unfortunately, and this one totally breaks my heart, but I just can't say the same for the Dreamcast emulator. The compatibility is there, and it isn't hard to configure, but the frame rate just can't quite keep up, and it renders everything basically unplayable. I hear overclocking can fix the problems I'm having, but I haven't had a chance to mess around with that yet, and in the meantime, I have both a good Dreamcast emulator for Windows, and I actually own a real Dreamcast, so I'm not too bothered. It's just kind of a shame that out of everything else the RetroPie did so well, it tends to fall short in this department. I'd say for the most part I'm very happy I own my Raspberry Pi. I'm a little disappointed by the NES and Dreamcast emulation, but I have alternatives for both of those, and this is a much more convenient option than even something like flashcards or, God forbid, actually buying video games. I'd recommend it for anyone out there looking for a cheap and easy option for emulation. Just don't expect it to play everything you throw at it, or for everything to run flawlessly. But hey, like I said, it does play Dracula X. Really, you have got to try this game if you haven't yet. For Videotron 2000, I'm Tim.